What's up and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, uh, I, re I review tech, video games, and create tutorials and occasional gameplay videos. And today I'm actually just diving into the Steam Deck once again. And what I want to cover is the different um, alternative uh, OSs that you can download onto your Steam Deck other than the Steam OS itself. And the reason I was doing this is because I wanted to one, I do use Linux as my main uh, daily driver on my laptop, and on my laptop I'm using a OS called Cache OS, and uh, that is an Arch-based Linux distribution. And so I really love Linux itself. So you know I was very you know comfortable and used to um, the Steam Deck when I got it. Um, but one thing that I did not like is that it was an, an immutable um, system, which means it's kind of locked down. It's read only, um, so you can't actually you know, just go in the terminal and download thing as you would in a regular Arch-based dis distribution. Um, you have to kind of use the Discover Store and uh, flat packs and um, app images and other ways of, of getting your, your programs onto, onto your uh, machine. So I wanted to try different ones that kind of open that up and give me the capability of kind of, you know, tinkering, my, tinkering with my device the way I want to and not being, you know, tied down to what is available to me um, by SteamOS. So what I did was I just went ahead and tried a bunch of different ones. Um, so the ones I did end up trying, it was uh, Chimera OS, um, Nabarro OS, which is a Fedora-based one, and Cache OS, which is also an Arch-based distribution as well. And since I use um, Cache OS, that's the one I started with first. Let's jump into that. So the installation process was, you know, fairly easy. Um, it was not too hard um you, you just install it onto a flash drive and then go straight into you you install it onto a flash drive and then just boot into the flash drive itself um you brought to a desktop um view where you're able to install it and it was pretty you know fast and easy process um if you're used to downloading and installing linux distributions it it was very easy to do um, but when i jumped into the actual operating system it did take me straight into steam it was uh, a, a easy process um, for the most part. Um, the one thing that I did notice is there are a lot of glitches. Um, it was it was very glitchy. It kept you know kind of crashing on me a little bit, and the the, the keyboard binding um, with the Steam and the X input would not come up right away. Um, so there's just a lot of things that just were kind of buggy with it. So I ended up you know trying something different. Um, I, I rebooted a couple times, and I, I just couldn't get it the way I wanted it to. So what I ended up doing was um, trying Nabara next. Um, and on Nabara, it was a little bit harder of a process to install <laughs> onto the Steam Deck, um, only because um, I needed to have a keyboard uh, uh, to access everything um, to get into the actual uh, system itself to, to get it installed. Uh, and then I had to actually um, create the partitions on there. Um, for whatever reason, it just wouldn't allow me to you know do the entire disk um, like I wanted to on my SD card um, but so I ended up doing the entire um, process on my um, actual hard drive on the Steam Deck instead of using the actual uh, SD card only because it just I don't know it just wouldn't work for whatever reason um, it might have just been me so it might have been easier to um, do it onto the device itself because you can always re-image the regular Steam OS um, back onto your device at any time very easily um, and it's not too hard. So when I booted up um, Navara, it brought me to you know the Steam login page. I'm just logged right in. All that was simple. I had all the same you know settings and everything that um, regular Steam had. Um, when I booted into the desktop mode, um, I was able to update all of my packages and everything. It had the similar to the desktop mode um, if you download Nabara onto your desktop um, it had all of the same startup um, queues there for first steps and downloading additional applications if you want to get OBS and stuff like that installed um, it kind of just prompts you and goes through all of that process for you to get that installed so that's really nice it has a lot of extra tools and things to get the best um, out of your device um, and optimize it really well so I definitely like Nabara for that fact and I was still using KDE, which was nice. Um, so it was very similar to the regular Steam OS as well. So I had no issues there. I was actually able to get um, the Decky Loader um, installed on there. But for whatever reason, when I restarted it, it did stop working after that. It did 
it stopped working for a couple things. Um, like my CSS um, loader that I had on there um, was fine. So I had a custom theme, all that was fine. But for whatever reason, I could not um, access uh, the settings for that again after um, the first reboot. Uh, so yeah, so then I jumped into um, Camaro OS. Um, so in Camaro OS, the um, install process was also um, a little clunky. <laughs> um, I actually ended up having to dock it um, because I could not, you know, log into the Wi-Fi. So I had to have um, an Ethernet connection. So I ended up docking it and connecting it to a LAN port. And from there, um, I was able to, you know, the installation process was, you know, fairly easy. This is also using Arch um, as well. So I was able to jump into it. Honestly, with Camaro S, I had the, the worst experience. Um, for whatever reason, I just could not um, get the Wi-Fi one to connect. That was the, the main issue that I was having. Um, everything loaded up fine. It was smooth. Um, it, it seemed like everything was, you know, functional as far as the settings and everything within SteamOS. For whatever reason, I just could not actually um, get the Wi-Fi to work. Um, and then also, uh, the other thing, when I dove into the actual um, uh, settings on the device, um, when you go into big, not big picture mode, but when you go into desktop mode, it's GNOME uh, or GNOME rather, um, which I'm not a huge fan of. I prefer um, KDE um, over that. And it just wasn't the best experience for one. It, it went to the like portrait mode um, and I had to like change the orientation to, to get it to, to show up correctly. I know that Camaro S has been around for a while and used on desktops, you know, very frequently. But for whatever reason, it just it just did not work well on the deck, even though it says it's it's fully um, fully compatible. So yeah, so I actually ended up keeping the Navara Linux uh, distribution on my actual Steam Deck. Um, so I did end up you know sticking with that one. Um, it has been kind of the the best fit for me right now, um, and I'm able to you know still go into desktop mode and do all the things that I want to. Um, you know, use the terminal, download things and, and get pretty much anything I want and kind of use my system the way I want to. So I really like that aspect. So um, that's what I'm sticking with. Honestly, the, the Steam OS um, is probably the best one to go to because you can actually get everything that you want um, and you can actually uh, unlock the read only um, portion of it. Um, I found a video that uh, Chris Titus had uploaded. I'll put it down in the description below. Uh, but yeah, he has a video where you can unlock it and still use, you know, SteamOS as it is, but be able to go into the actual um, desktop mode and use the terminal the way you want to and not um, be kind of locked down to read only um, for your home partition and everything. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of uh, where we're at. Um, definitely you know, try these out for your own. You may have different experiences. I am using the um, OLED version of the Steam Deck, so that may have that things may vary from the LCD version to the OLED. Um, so definitely give it a try, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.